So Alison Kellum, sorry, I know. I don't know why it always does that. Alison Kellum. Alison spent many years bouncing around the continental US working as an environmental educator and visual communicator. She came to Scripps with the desire to reconnect with her passion for marine biology and to better understand why people engage in marine conservation. On her way, she's discovered that the best place to read journal articles is in a hammock on a sunny afternoon. One of the things I love about Allison is that she is organized. She is incredibly detail-oriented. She has color-coded everything. And that is why she's going to be a fantastic course assistant this summer for the incoming class. <laughs> where she can just be a valuable resource for everything they need to know that I forgot to tell them, especially related to citations. <laughs> um, what I love about Allison's project is that it's just incredibly valuable. I don't want to give it away before she jumps into the project, but uh, what she's doing, it, it, doesn't, it hasn't existed yet, and I think understanding human perceptions, especially on conservation issues, and understanding the difference uh, in those perceptions before and after engaging in things like citizen science, just so incredible. And you know, I think the information that she's come up with, I mean, she has no shortage of data. She has more, she could spend the next year analyzing the data she has. And I just think it's gonna be incredibly valuable to the organization that she partnered with. So I'm really excited about her project and I'm really proud to introduce Allison Kellum. Thank you, Samantha. So as you said, my name is Allison, and my project is Fishing for Science, a survey of volunteers engaged in collaborative fisheries research. I had a lot of trouble coming up with a project. Um, I had a lot of different things I was excited about and that I wanted to do, but I took a sampling trip with a volunteer program this October, and I got to meet a bunch of wonderful people on the sampling trip, including Alex, Alex the albacore assassin. And I was super curious. This just totally um, dis disassociated all the different ideas I had about recreational anglers and conservation. And I thought, doesn't he know you can't keep the fish? They're going to science. So I asked him what his motivation was for this program. And he told me that he has been fishing for all his life, as you might uh, guess from his moniker, but um, he's seen the resources change. He's seen um, the fish that he's caught have, have changed throughout the years, and he wants to make sure that his children have uh, the same resource opportunities he's had to enjoy recreational fishing and enjoy um, plentiful oceans. So Alex and others are a part of a collaboration, a collaboration between volunteers that are recreational anglers scientists, managers, and commercial industry, including commercial passenger fishing vessels. Together, they've partnered and developed a program to monitor our marine protected areas here in California. This program is called the California Collaborative Fisheries Research Project. This program monitors not only marine protected areas, but local reference areas. And I'm gonna use an acronym for this quite often, as you might guess, it's the, the first initial. So CCFRP um, will be uh, probably what I'll say most of this, and I might say it pretty fast, so that, that means the program that I study and that these volunteers participate in. And I'll also be using the acronym for Marine Protected Areas, or MPAs. This program started in the central coast of California this region, and uh, this was the first region where MPAs were implemented after the Marine Life Protection Act mandated an uh, integrated network uh, and that was passed in 1999. So in 2007, CCFRP joined together and is spearheaded by Moss Landing Marine Labs and Cal Poly. Together, between 2007 and 2017, they uh, collected data from four sites and recently added another site uh, in the Farallon Islands, but I asked volunteers about these sites specifically and their experiences with them. The volunteers, their main job on the boat is to fish, and they really love it. 
as you might not be surprised by the fact they want to spend 10 or 12 hours a day out on the boat getting up early. I had to drive to Dana Point, it took me two hours to get there, I got up at 4 a.m. to join on one of these research cruises. Those fish are then given to scientists. These scientists collect data on the species, their length, and um, this data gets used uh, for long-term timescales and comparisons between sites. As you see, you have to work pretty fast uh, on the boat in order to process the hundreds of fish that are landed every, every day. So as I said, my research wasn't about the fish or the data. CCFRP does an awesome job at analyzing that. I was really interested in talking to these fishermen about their um, opinions and attitudes and learning more about them as a community. I wanted to know why do volunteers join the program and why do they continue volunteering? How do the characteristics of CCFRP volunteers compare to those of other anglers in California? And did they did participating in the program influence volunteer opinions of marine protected areas? In order to do this, I had to create a survey, and as we know, that's a long process, especially when you need university approval. But I did it, and I ended up uh, developing an online survey. Volunteers come from a very uh, wide-ranging region within the Central Coast, and so online surveys was the best way to distribute it, and uh, I was told that volunteers often communicate very well with the program through um, email. So I worked with the program coordinators and we distributed this online survey with 29 questions about volunteering, fisheries management and fisheries health, marine protected areas, and their demographics. Through this interface, people were able to put input on questions varying from how long they volunteered to whether they had opinions of MPAs before and after. Uh, there are also multiple choice questions and um, it was very interesting to be able to collect that data and then analyze it. I did analysis in SPSS, which is a type of statistical software, uh, as well as in Excel. And I'm gonna show you some of my results. As Samantha said, I had lots of data. 29 questions is, qu is quite a bit to analyze. I wish it was only five. Um, so instead, I'm just gonna talk about my three main research questions and some data that helps to illuminate um, the answers to that. So why do people volunteer? The majority of people said that they like to participate in science. This isn't that surprising, it's a, it's a scientific process, but it was super exciting to see that people saw this as a huge value and three quarters of volunteers were excited about this part of the program. Like Adam, uh, or sorry, Alex, um, they like to give back to the fisheries resource, uh, as well as enjoying a day of fishing provided by the program. This is a free opportunity, and uh, additionally, this is one of the only times that members of the public can fish in MPAs and see the resource and changes in the resource themselves. Usually that's only reserved to fisheries managers. So about a third of volunteers said that fishing in marine protected areas was important to them. And a quarter said, of course, spending time with friends and family. The reasons why people continue volunteering match these same reasons why they join. So people are continuing to find value and continuing to be excited about the program uh, for, this, for those same regions. As I said, I was interested in learning about the characteristics of these volunteers. What made them similar to other anglers and what made them different? This is not 50-50, but the angler community is also not 50-50. This actually represents pretty closely the angler community, about 80, um, 80 or 90 to 20 in terms of male to female. Our age ratio was a little bit different, however. This is from a 2011 survey of fishing, hunting, and wildlife-related uh, recreators in California. And we see here that there are large range of ages. I've taken off, there's are also folks that were interviewed for the survey who were 16 and uh, 16 to 18, um, but that was not part of my sampling survey, so we just have this part of the range. And it sort of spread out pretty, pretty evenly across the board. In comparison, the volunteers with CCFRP who responded uh, were more uh, in the older ages group, especially 65 and older. 
Volunteer opportunities with CCFRP are offered oftentimes during the week, Thursdays and Fridays, really depending on when charter boats can be scheduled and the opportunities of the, the, the volunteer coordinators can put together. So these uh, times might be more available for older volunteers, possibly uh, people who are retired. It is interesting to note that people who are younger are not as engaged with this program, and so if the program were more interested in connecting and bringing younger anglers into the community and participating uh, and, and contributing to the de development of the program, that that might be something to uh, be beefed up a little bit, get more outreach on that end. I also wanted to know about their conservation mindedness related to peers. So this is similar to one of the questions Emily asked in her survey. And this was important to me because I wanted to know um, sort of what uh, attitudes people already had and already held about, um, about conservation. And so by asking about conservation mindedness, we were able to put a lot of different concepts and ideas into one metric. And a majority, vast majority, said they were more conservation-minded, with 25% saying that they were similarly conservation-minded to their peers. The volunteer opportunity, the role was developed more for the recreational community, but we see here in this graph that a lot of people are participating, not just the 65% who have no related work experience, but also including people from fisheries, recreational, and commercial sectors, as well as marine resource managers. This is exciting that members of the public are engaged, but it's also exciting that people who wouldn't necessarily see the resource eye to eye are getting to fish shoulder to shoulder and um, experience not only fishing in MPAs, but also talking with other people and building relationships and partnerships, which was a main goal of CCFRP. One of the things that really drew me to this project was the opportunity to uh, an analyze change in opinion in marine protected areas. And it took me a long time to figure out a metric because I don't have a way to go back in time and ask people, why are you joining and what are your opinions now before you've even started? So I had to develop a series of questions that asked people to reflect on their opinions. And I had a before question asking people before, what was your opinion, positive to negative or no opinion, and then after. These are my results. So for before volunteering with CCFRP, a majority of respondents had a positive or somewhat positive experience. These volunteers might have joined the program anytime between 2007 and 2017. So um, that, that can be factors in, in here, but at the same time, these results um, align with uh, uh, the opinion of anglers and recreational, uh, and sorry, and Californians um, uh, in the last 10 years about MPAs. There's a large number, however, who said they had no opinion. When I asked people about their opinions of MPAs after, I got this graph, which is super exciting. We're seeing a large increase in the number of people who say that they have a positive opinion of MPAs. This increase also co-occurred with a decrease in somewhat negative or negative opinions, as well as a dramatic decrease in no opinion. These graphs show net changes across the whole group, but I wanted to see on an individual level what was the change in opinion. And so what I did was I combined these two into a single variable uh, of change in opinion. And that change was uh, put into three categories, negative, no, or positive change. So you see the majority had no change in opinion. So they maintained either a positive opinion from before to after or some other uh, opinion as well. And only a handful had a negative change in opinion, while a large portion had positive change in opinion after uh, being part of the program. I want to know what parts of the program might have significantly affected their opinion change. And so I uh, put this against three different metrics using a multinomial logistic regression and uh, I can't really fully explain that to you, but I've had it vetted by other people. Um, and um, basically, it's, it's comparing these different variables. And the variables were length of time in the program, represented by the first picture, the number of volunteer workshops, which is an opportunity to learn more about the data and to appreciate volunteers that the program puts on, and the number of trips. And it was found that the, there was a statistically significant uh, difference between volunteers who had been in the program longer and those a shorter amount of time in terms of change. Particularly, those who had been in the program longer were more likely to have a positive change in opinion than no opinion at all. 
Marine conservation is about more than just numbers or lines on a map, it's about people. Speaking with Alex and others that morning, I realized there's a whole community of people who are both passionate fishermen and enthusiastic citizen scientists willing to let some fish swim free so we can learn a little bit more about how to protect them. This survey has uh, give, collected a massive data about this unique and motivated group of volunteers. I even wish there, there's some questions I always wish that I had asked because as surveys go, that's what happens. Um, but it has opened a window onto the human dimensions of engaging fishermen in fisheries research and citizen science. I really want to acknowledge uh, the folks at CCFRP, particularly the principal investigators, Rick Starr and Dean Went, for their continued, um, well, their, their leadership in this project and their ability to continue this project for long-term monitoring and for the volunteers and their willingness to let me lean on their research and interview their volunteers for my survey. Jen and Grant were integral to uh, developing my survey and to distributing it. And of course, my capstone committee has been ever patient and ever um, insightful and helpful for me. I also want to thank Ernie Brazer. He's been our survey guru for the whole cohort, <laughs> um, even those who decided it was too much and didn't want to do surveys. <laughs> um, he's been a, a godsend and to my friends and family, and of course, the CCFRP volunteers who participated in my project. Thank you so much. I had a question. You had uh, the graph up there that showed the change in positivity, if that's a word, um, between... This one or the previous no, the, one? No, the, the one that went sideways. Yeah, that one. Okay. And it seemed to me that the positive people got more positive in proportion to the amount of people who went in negative and then get, became less negative. And I'm wondering, what do you think, what do you think as part of that experience that they had that made the people that already came in there thinking this is a good thing that got them proportionately more positive than the people you were able to change from negative to just maybe, okay, this is not so bad. So the, um, the, the data that I have and that I've been able to analyze in the short 10 week window um, was specific to the amount of time. So that was the one significant variable was the amount of time that they're spending with the program. So they are, developing relationships, they're talking with other people, they're talking with the scientists, um, and so it's possible that that experience has given them a more positive opinion. It's also the, um, the MPAs have been around for longer, so that the resources are actually changing, and it could be people are seeing um, differences there. I hope that answered your question. Thank Hi. you. Oh, sorry. Um, great presentation. I really enjoyed all the graphs and how you, you made it visible so that we could understand it. And it's clear that how much you appreciate this program came through. And so I was wondering if you saw yourself volunteering after this was done, and also if someone in the audience was interested in volunteering, <laughs> how would we get involved? Uh, well, if someone in the audience is actually in Southern California, Erica Mason, who's on my committee, is over there. and. They're scheduling volunteers for the summer uh, sampling season currently. So I don't know if she still needs people, but she would be the person to talk to if you're in San Diego and are interested in the program. Um, I'd definitely be interested in the program and volunteering again. Um, the, the kind of bittersweet part is I got to meet all these awesome people, but we had a rough day at sea. So I wasn't actually part of the sampling, which is why I have like video from other people who've been on trips before. Um, but I would definitely love to go on the trip again and, and really get to experience um, the full hectic and exciting day. So you mentioned that you had a, a ton of questions on your survey, um, as did I, and I know that it's a lot to analyze. Could you tell us one thing that you felt that you had left out from the PowerPoint, but that you still thought was really interesting and really piqued your interest? I can mention two. <laughs> I can <laughs> mention one. Um, so I also asked people if they had visited the MPAs 
before being before they were implemented. So a number of these areas had not been protected before 2007, and people were al previous allowed to fish in them. Um, and it was much to the, some of their consternation that they weren't able to fish in them afterwards. But I wanted to know, had they fished in them before the closure, and then with the program, did they have an opportunity to sample in those same places? And I was, um, I'm not remembering the exact results from that, but it was it was really cool to be able to put those pieces together and and see that. Um, I also did some further analyses on. Um, I had a lot of questions about opinions of fisheries management tools, especially for recreational fisheries, and I was able to tease out differences between people who identified as the various, um, having various industry work experience, so either fishermen or recreational or none, and um, it was really cool to see the differences, but that, that's a lot more graphs, a lot more bar <laughs> graphs, um, which I didn't have time for, so thank you. Sorry, I, can I just ask one more question? <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. So um, I was just curious, and wonderful presentation, by the way. Uh, will CCFRP use the data that you've collected to um, change or maybe just make adjustments to the way that they engage new volunteers or engage their current volunteers? So that, that was something that um, I thought, oh, this will be super exciting. But they've had 10 successful years of the, of the program. And as you can see from all the smiling faces, people really are engaged and really do enjoy. I think that um, the program um, will find this interesting. And I'm excited to fi finish my report and polish it up and present it to them as well. Um, but I, I, I think any changes is, is their decision, and um, I can't speak to what they want to do with the data further other than to um, share it with possible offenders or with their volunteers themselves. They, they've expressed sharing that um, sort of reflection with their volunteers. 